called the most savage river in North America. Arcing its way across British Columbia, the river roars down from the mountains to the sea. But its importance is perhaps best defined by one word, salmon. The Fraser River is the largest salmon producing system in the world. watershed in North America, from the Rocky Mountains to the Pacific Coast, from verdant forest to semi-arid desert. The Fraser River flows for 1,368 kilometers from source to sea. and it travels with such velocity that water from the glaciers of Mount Robson will mix with ocean brine in just over a week. The Fraser drains an area of 234,000 square kilometers, almost a quarter of British Columbia. It begins about 35 kilometers southwest of Jasper on the western flank of the Continental Divide. It traces an S-shape through the province, turning south at Prince George, west at Hope, and ending at Vancouver, a sprawling metropolis on Canada's Pacific coast. It's hard to imagine that this mighty river begins in such a tiny trickle of a stream 2,100 meters up in the heart of the Rocky Mountains. As it rushes down out of the mountains, it drops two-thirds of its elevation in the first 150 kilometers. Propelled by gravity and fueled by the merging waters of its tributaries, the Fraser quickly gathers strength. About midway through its journey south, it uses that power to cut through a sedimentary plain carving a canyon three to 500 meters deep, lined with spectacular cliffs and sculpted hoodoos. For 38 kilometers from Boston Bar to Yale, granite walls squeeze the Fraser River into an increasingly narrow channel. It's called Hell's Gate. At peak flow, the volume of water is twice the amount that flows over Niagara Falls, and it surges through an opening only 34 meters wide. The vertical walls of Hell's Gate presented a formidable challenge for the CPR, but a railroad was the price of admission for British Columbia to join Canada. Construction began in the spring of 1880. Sternwheelers steamed their way as far upriver as they could and established a base of operations at Yale. Thousands of workers flooded the area. It took four years and cost many lives, but the Canadian Pacific Railroad conquered the canyon. Disaster struck almost 30 years later during construction on a second line on the opposite side of the canyon. Mounting costs had led to construction shortcuts and rock debris from the blasting was allowed to just fall into the river. The channel became so congested that at least 90% of the spawning salmon were unable to get upriver. A 
effectively destroying the salmon stocks on four-fifths of the Fraser system. A few were saved by natives who lifted the fish over the debris in their dip nets. Fishways were built in 1946. These concrete mazes gave the fish a helping hand by reducing the current from 32 kilometers an hour to five. But the problems facing the Fraser River salmon don't end there. A combination of climate change, overfishing, and industrial growth has further depleted the salmon stocks and there are no quick or easy solutions. The plight of the salmon first inspired swimmer Finn Donnelly back in 1990. I actually got started swimming environmental marathon swims in 1990 across Georgia Strait, which is the home of the salmon and thought in 1995 that I wanted to work on the birthplace of the salmon. I think some people understand the dependency on the Fraser and the importance of the river system. I think often um, in the urban centers that, that understanding, that relationship is lost. And that's one of the reasons uh, I'm doing this swim is to encourage a reconnection with, with river systems because they're actually good indicators of health of a, of a region. Donnelly swam the length of the Fraser, all 1,368 kilometers in 1995. Five years later, he did it again. I've had a range of uh, experiences from being extremely scared and nervous to feeling almost at home or at one with the river in, in a sense that I'm working along with it. His support crew scans the water for dangerous currents and rapids and helps set up the community events that give meaning and context to his marathon. <laughs> we work with schools and stewardship groups and local government and First Nations and we bring them together in, in community settings and we talk about the issues and we encourage sustainable alternatives for the, the new millennium. Tackling the environmental issues that plague the Fraser is a monumental task. But it's not unlike swimming its 1,368 kilometer length. You do it one stroke at a time. <laughs> 